Hi, my name is Rich Harrington and welcome to another edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today we're going to take a look at using gradients for a specialized use. Now a gradient is a gradual blend between two or more colors, hence the term gradient. And we're going to use a gradient to tint the sky in a photo to make it look a little bluer and a little more natural. Here's how. So I have a photo here and it was an overcast day and you see that the clouds are sort of blown out and it's just really a very boring sky. Let's go ahead to a photo that has a good sky and just click over. Now we're going to create a custom gradient using the blues here in this sky. What I want to do is select the gradient tool and you'll see that the gradient thumbnail loads up here in the options bar. Now there's several presets that you can work with. If you just click the arrow to drop it down, you'll see the currently loaded versions and you can click the submenu and choose from several more. What we want to do here is create a new gradient completely from scratch. So to do that, we'll click on the gradient thumbnail, which is going to open up the gradient editor. Now a gradient is going to use two colors by default. I'm going to go ahead here and select, and instead of using a red here, let's just go ahead, double click, open up the color stop window. I'm going to select a blue from the darker regions of the sky and click OK. For the other end here, let's click. I'm going to go ahead and select a lighter blue in this natural scene and the sky is a little brighter down here near the horizon and click OK. And what you see there is a very natural gradient. Now if you want to use more than two colors, you're welcome to. We can go ahead toward the middle here and click to add a stop and then double click to open the color stop window and pick a new color from the middle region of the sky. And now we have a nice three tone gradient going from a dark saturated blue to a brighter middle blue to a very lighter blue near the horizon line. Now this gradient is great and I actually want to save this so I could use it for future projects. Really straightforward. Simply click the new button here and it adds it to the current preset list. Now if you just add it there, it's stored temporarily until Photoshop crashes or you reset the gradients. If you want to permanently save it, go ahead and click the save button here and then go ahead and give a name here like your name plus custom gradients and click OK and it'll store that. Now we'll go ahead and click OK, switch on over to our photo and you see here we have the washed out sky. Now one of my favorite selections tools is going to be the color range command. You access that with select color range. Go ahead and click once in the sky to make an initial selection and then hold down the shift key and drag through to select more. You can adjust fuzziness to taste if you want and what we're trying to do there is pick up the window area plus a little bit more where the sky is going to be reflected on the brighter surfaces of the building. I'll go ahead and click OK and then what we're going to do is add a new gradient. I'll click the new fill or pattern layer icon here and choose gradient. We're going to click to select that new gradient we just made and click OK. What I want to do here though is actually tweak the angle so the darker blue starts at the top and it feeds downward. Now that did a nice job but it's not exactly natural. Currently the gradient is blowing out and covering everything in the scene. What we need to do now is actually change its blending mode so the tint of the gradient mixes with the color value of the clouds. Now there are several modes to choose from. I'm going to start with something like soft light which is a little bit gentler. You see there that we're getting a definite tint of the sky. If we want to go a little darker we could try something like multiply and instead lower the opacity down a bit so it tints the clouds but isn't quite as intense. And you see that does a good job. If you want to quickly cycle through your blending modes just pick the move tool and use the keyboard shortcut of shift plus. There's color burn which is quite nice, a little intense and we can step through until we find one that works well for our situation. I think I'm going to stick with that multiply mode that we used near the beginning and lower the opacity to about 40%. Now you see that this is actually painted with a layer mask attached so if I want to control it I can click on the layer mask, grab the brush tool and paint with black. And what I'm going to do here is just paint a little bit of this window area out so it doesn't affect that archway as much. That looks really good. If I want to toggle the before and after it's just a quick click and you see that we successfully stole the sky from one image and mapped it to another using a gradient. Now gradients have lots of uses whether you're using them for masks, 
for designing images, for painting, you're going to find yourself using gradients all the time. The important thing to learn here is that you could select custom colors for the gradients and actually store those to use them on upcoming projects. A nice gradual blend for the sky is going to create a more believable sky and this is very common. In fact, even in traditional photography, many photographers use a gradiated filter that they attach to the front of the lens that helps intensify the blues or the oranges in a sky. My name is Rich Harrington. I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. I invite you to check out our resource blog at rastervector.com. And while you're there, take a look at the new book, Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS4 from Peach Pit Press. Thanks again.